And the International Monetary Fund, in its overview of the world economic outlook for June, titled A Crisis Like No Other, An Uncertain Recovery, released on Wednesday, downgraded Nigeria's 2020 growth projection, saying the economy will shrink by 5.4%. The fund had in April 2020 projected that the country's economy would contract by 3.4% this year. However, some economic analysts have rejected this projection, including the Central Bank of Nigeria, now, what are, the, what are they seeing differently? Let's talk to Professor Uche Uwaleke, Professor of Capital Markets at the Nasrawa State University and a former Commissioner for Finance in Imo State. Good morning, Professor. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning, Shimeze. Thank you for inviting me. You were one of the first people to react to the IMF's economic outlook for Nigeria, and you don't agree with them. Why? What have you seen differently? Uh, well, Chimeze, uh, uh, IMF uh, thought, you know, you know, says uh, it underestimated the destructive Im impact of um, COVID-19 on the um, global economy. Mm -hmm. When it came up with the first um, uh, forecast in April, um, you know, during which the global economy was um, forecast to, to dip by... Um, 3% and for Nigeria um, to shrink by 3.44%. Um, right now, the IMF has revised it and um, thinks the global economy will, will uh, contract by minus 4.9 and uh, for Nigeria, uh, minus 5.4. Uh, you'll agree with me, Chimeze, that um, uncertainty is one thing that challenges um, focus, um, which is why you have... Um, for the same country, you have you know, different forecasts coming from different institutions. Um, for example, that of the World Bank is um, uh, talking about minus 3.2%. And you have um, the National Bureau of Statistics, uh, which, which is of course contained in the Economic um, Sustainability Plan, uh, you know, talking about the economy contracting by even 0 0.59. Uh, that is on the assumption that oil price uh, stays at uh, $30 per barrel you know, on the average. So you, you look at that margin of error, you know, between these three. You have IMF at minus 5.4, you have the World Bank at minus 3.2, and then locally here we are talking about minus 0 0.59. Uh, even the local one that um, is using a cautious um, um, oil benchmark, uh, a cautious forecast of um, $20 per barrel, says that if oil stays at $20 per barrel, that the economy, you know, will shrink at um, the rate of minus 2.8, minus 2.88 percent. Again, very far from um, you know uh, what the IMF is pro projecting. So, uh, so I think that of the IMF is rather rather, rather pessimistic, and um, of course did not take into cognizance the fact that the government of Nigeria uh, is also putting in place countermeasures. The government of Nigeria uh, has a, has a, a, you know. Um, uh, you know, plans are foot to inject 2.3 trillion in Naira into the economy. The 2.3 trillion Naira injected into the economy will, of course, help stimulate it to a point where, you know, uh, growth rates uh, will not contract by as much as what the IMF um, um, is spending. So I think the IMF didn't take into um, account all the measures uh, that have been, you know, um, put in place so far, and the ones the government also uh, plans to um, put in place. They, are all, they, they were just more concerned about, yes, um, drop in oil price, um, uh, lockdowns um, here and there, uh, you know, based on which they now made their, made their projections. So I, I think it's um, rather too far. It's um, mm. a little um, uh, unattainable. Uh, I'd rather stay with that of uh, Nigeria, and um, the World Bank is a, a lot more realistic than what the IMF right. um, projected. Okay, let's set aside um, all of these um, projections now from IMF, World Bank, Nigeria. Well, yes, globally, the IMF is saying the COVID-19 pandemic has had more negative impact on activity in the first half of 2020 than anticipated. And of course, um, recovery is projected to be more gradual than previously forecast. Now back here in Nigeria, we know that aside from COVID-19, Nigeria has fundamental economic issues. Oil, which is our main source of earning, is dwindling. Nigeria has revenues of around 5% of GDP, which is one of the lowest in the world for similar-sized countries. 
exchange rate is depreciating further, debt has continued to rise, our health system is not in good shape, our education system is not working, we have continued to be import dependent, the manufacturers and producers are owing the banks, the banks are dealing with non-performing loans, infrastructure is poor, poverty is everywhere. Yes, the government comes up with fantastic policies and programs, yet it looks like it's all about talk and no action. So, where is the bright stop, uh, bright spot here? Yes, I, I, I agree with you to a, a large extent. Um, uh, but again, we've also seen some um, level of resilience, um, you know, e economic um, resilience. Uh, don't forget to Chimeze that uh, this is uh, an economy that was just coming out of, um, you know, uh, of, um, of a recession, a five consecutive quarter of negative growth in GDP. Uh, we only left the recession, I think, mid of um, 20, 2017. And by 2019, the economy was already growing. Uh, the average it grew last year was 2.27. And um, if you also recall, the Q4 of 2019 was even as high as 2.55. And um, uh, if you also look at what happened um, in the first quarter of this year, uh, in spite of COVID-19, in spite of the drop in um, oil, uh, the economy was also able to eke, eke out um, um, you know, a positive growth rate of 1.87. Again, part of why I, I doubt that the economy will um, shrink by as much as 5.4% uh, is because what it means uh, if, you know, effectively is that between now and the end of the year, um, uh, between the second, third and fourth quarter, Okay, the, the economy, you know, would uh, be contracting by as much as, um, um, you know, over seven percent. You know, to be able to cancel the one point eight seven that um, was recorded um, in Q one. So uh, we've also had, well, to a large extent, to some level of macroeconomic stability, uh, stability in um, um, exchange rates, you know, in particular. Um, well, if you talk about the bright spots, uh, let me use uh, as reference points the. Um, the GDP report uh, by the National Bureau of Statistics for Q1. Yes, the oil sector was the major driver, you know, growing by as much as 5.06%. Uh, Non-oil sector grew by 1.55%, um, um, you know, percent. And um, if you look at the non-oil sector, the agri sector uh, was around 2.82. Um, um, now, going forward, part of why I think, I, I think the contraction may not be deep is because if you look at the, the countermeasures, the interventions, the interventions are going to these sectors that are, um, some of them, already in the negative territory. If you look at real estate, for example, real estate dropped by as much as minus 4.75 um, Q1. And the government now says it intends to do 300,000 um, um, houses in, all, in the, lo all the local go governments, okay, in the next... Um, um, a few months. So if that happens, you can imagine the uh, kind of stimulation it's going to have on, on the economy. Uh, as we speak, a lot of uh, artisans are out of jobs. Um, a, a lot of um, electricians, uh, you know, uh, bricklayers, um, uh, tie lads, you know, and the rest of them. So if this happens, all these people will, um, many of them will, of course, find, find something to do. You now look at agriculture. Agri grew by just 2.82, um, sorry, 2.2 percent um, Q1, and then um, if the government, you know, uh, puts into action its plan to do mass agriculture, uh, involving getting into, uh, you know, getting as much as 10,000 to 20,000 to 100,000, you know, hectares of land in all, each of the local governments, even if I take the lower limit, which is 20,000, and you multiply that by 774 local governments, you get nearly 16 million hectares of. Um, you know, of land. A, a country that has nearly 30, 90 million hectares of land, okay, with only 34 million that is, you know, cultivable. So if you now add 16 million hectares of land and you also put the money in agro-processing, you can also imagine the kind of, um, uh, you know, jobs that will be created. The government is talking about, um, uh, by their projection, you know, creating as much as 5 million jobs. So if you have 5 million jobs directly, you know, from, uh, from that, um, uh, you know, exercise, you know, not, not talk of the in, in, indirect jobs that will be created. Then you also have the mass housing that will also 
where we also expect jobs to be created. You, you, can, you, can, you can be sure that the economy you know, um, will be lifted from the point where it is now. Because come to think of it, what is recession, you know, um, specifically speaking? Uh, if, if in, if theory tells us, uh, John Menaken says, it's basically caused by you know, weak aggregate demand. Okay? So if you have people employed, people have things to do, and private consumption uh, you know, is increasing, firms' investment you know, is also increasing, you find that um, the economy was stimulated, and the 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 if you like the red spots that we have currently, you know, will be turned to to green by the time the government pumps, pumps money in agriculture, pumps money in um, um, housing, um, and again also begins to reopen the economy, follow the timetable and reopen the economy because that is very critical. Uh, if the if flight operations, for example, commence now and we open interstate uh, travel, you can be sure that trade will pick up. Trade in Q1 wow. dropped wow. by minus 2.8. Trade is yeah, still well. in negative territory. So if we open well, interstate Waleke, border... Uh, 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 yes. Professor Waleke, if I may come in here, I mean, all that you have said, it's still under probability. If, if, if the government will do this, if they do that. Yes, the World Bank also came out uh, to say Nigeria needs to deepen economic reforms and boost um, government revenues in order to have a sustained recovery after the coronavirus-induced oil price shock. Is it possible that our policymakers can begin to act and do the right thing rather than talk, 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 because it seems to be all talk and no action? That's the problem here. Yes, I agree with you. Um... Implementation is key, uh, very critical, and that's why if you also look at the economic sustainability plan, um, if you've gone through it, it has three pillars. One is the real sector, where the, the government talked about mass housing, um, um, agriculture, uh, the uh, IC, I, ICT, the solar, installing solar, um, uh, you know, solar in five million homes. Then you also have the, the NEBLA, which is the fiscal and monetary side and particularly the, the third pillar in that economic sustainability plan is uh, uh, implementation so for the first time in a, a in a document like that we are seeing that the that the implementation is uh, receiving attention so if the they go by that document okay because what all that i'm saying also depends on the effectiveness of um, the uh, um, uh, you know implementation but, but of course you, you know that the central bank uh, um, you know, has already commenced some of these um, me measures. Uh, talking about the 50 billion, um, you know, intervention fund uh, distributed through the Nisa Microfinance Bank. We understand 49 billion of that, you know, has been um, disbursed to 80,000, um, um, you know, um, applicants. The one trillion that the, uh, the central bank is also providing, because the 2.3 trillion is actually the bulk of it, 1.1 trillion, according to that document, is, uh, made of, is going to be made available by the central bank. The federal government is only mobilizing from special accounts about five, 500 uh, uh, billion. Then you have about 300 billion being sourced from other, other sources. So some of these funds are, are, are already out, um, no doubt. So uh, again, with respect to the, uh, the social intervention, Okay, that is where I would like to see a lot more uh, traction, um, the, the social intervention um, uh, uh, schemes, okay? And the because the government is talking about scaling up the, these schemes. So one will want to see um, a lot more traction there uh, uh, to the point where the urban poor, urban poor uh, in particular, you know, is, is captured. So I think going forward, if um, uh, the... the Implementation is taken a lot more seriously. Uh, some of these um, uh, objectives will be achieved, and and will be near. Will be nowhere near the five point the five point four contraction that the IMF um, you know has has uh, uh, projected. Remember okay. too that in uh, 2016, even when we had that economic recession, the economy tanked by just 1.6. Okay, in 2016, the economy declined by minus 1.6, and in the middle of that uh, uh, decline. Agriculture, the agri sector was growing at an average of 4%. The Q3 of 2016, agri sector grew by 4%. So I think now that agri sector is at 2.2%, I think if we do a lot more in agriculture, the, the growth we are going to have in agriculture 
a sector that contributes up to 22% of GDP, according to the MBS, last um, um, GDP report. If you do more in agriculture, it will offset whatever shortfall we're going to have from the oil sector. Right. The oil sector was the major driver in, the Q, in Q1, okay. 5.06. So even if it drops right. because of production cuts we're, we're experiencing because of lower oil price, we'll okay. make up for that in agri, we'll make up for that in housing, we'll make up for that in I, ICT, and even in financial services. Of course, you know, our, fin our financial right, system, professor. thank God, you know, is still, a, is still a, a sound, you know, okay. to a large extent. Okay, Professor Waleke. Uh, well, let's just hope um, the government learn to do the right thing now, implementation, as you said. Thank you very much for your time, Professor Waleke. Thanks for inviting me.